This is Professor Darif Seitz. This Java tutorial is about graphical user interface flow layout managers. This example that we're running here in this window uses an overall border layout with the north region having a title flow layout manager. The south region has a panel with these command buttons and the center region uses is a panel with a flow layout that panel has a red border around it showing the extent of that panel in the panel are various components labels fields text fields text areas radio buttons check boxes and an image the way a flow layout flows is it's row by row and in the order that the components are added to the container they appear sequentially in a row and when there's no more room in that row they wrap to the next row. We have two rows here right now. The second row's height is dictated by this image as the highest component in that row and that's making that row be that that high. If the window is resized to make it smaller, now we have three rows because there's not enough room and they flow, they wrap around. If we make it wider on both ends, you can see how things wrap back up to row one. Let's put things back sort of how they were with the two rows flowing. These command buttons down here, when we click the left button, it changes the alignment used by the flow layout. If we change it to left, in each row the components are left aligned in that row. If we change it to right, they're right aligned in that row. And then center is the default as they were. There's also the ability when you construct your flow layout to specify a horizontal gap and a vertical gap between the components that are being laid out. We'll click the plus horizontal gap and as we click it you can see that the items are separating because there's some space between them horizontally. And at this point, there wasn't enough room in a row, and they flowed around to a third row. If we decrease it back, the vertical gap works similarly. It puts gaps between the rows, or decreasing it back as such. Let's now go look at the code for this application. Here in the source code, we have the flow layout manager class extending a JFrame. The contents pane and the panels are declared here. There's a center panel and a south panel. Components that will be used are declared. The border with the red border there that we'll use for that center panel is set up with a border factory create line border one pixel in width there's fonts a 14 point bold and plain font to make things larger than the defaults here we have a flow layout that we'll use in the constructor we call the base class, we set fonts, get the content pane. In the north region, we put the title and set its font and add it to the into the north region of the contents. The center region here is our new J panel called Panel Center, and we set its layout to be that flow layout that we see up here 
Then we set the border on the panel using that border region. Following our components that will be put into the center panel, they're instantiated, text fields, check boxes, text areas, radio buttons, a button group for the radio buttons. Then an image. Here we add all those components to the center panel and then add the center panel to the center area of the border layout. The south region also has a panel with buttons and we add those buttons to the south region Notice in there to get the gap between the two uh, groups of buttons, we're adding a rigid area using the static function create rigid area in the box class, giving it a dimension of 20 of a width, and the height is just one. We're trying to get a width separator there, that's how you can do it. We have a button handler uh, that will be a private interclass inter and we're instantiating a reference to it here. Registering event handlers on the buttons in the bottom in the south area. They're all being registered with the same button handler. Set the size of the window. This statement here passing set location relative to with a null centers our window within the screen area. Here's where we set the fonts calling the UI manager. The button handler <clears throat> which implements the action listener checks which button and for each button it does an appropriate action here takes the flow layout and sets its alignment to be flow layout left. Here it's center, here it's right. The gaps, when we're doing the plus gap, we set the horizontal gap to the flow layout get horizontal gap plus one. So we're getting the current value, adding one to it, and setting that into the horizontal gap. Similarly for the minus horizontal, the plus vertical, and the minus vertical. Then we have to revalidate our center panel because the layout has been affected by these changes and revalidate causes the uh, container to relay out itself. Down here in the bottom is the main function that gets our application going. Going back up to the top here, we've looked at flow layout, the fact that you can change the alignment in a layout, a flow layout, to left, center, or right. It's showing how to center the main window, looked at the horizontal and vertical gaps, and mentioned the use of a, a rigid area spacer in the button area. We'll run the application again and look at it now that we've studied the code. Here again is the application with again the red bordered panel is our flow layout panel and we see the rows flowing across and then wrapping left to right, left to right. And if we shrink it then it forces more wrapping. And we've mentioned the ability for left alignment, right alignment, and center alignment for the flow layout manager and the ability to alter through dynamically or at construction time the horizontal gaps or the vertical gaps.